in this section in 1.4 we're going to continue our work with solving equations. We're going to look at solving one-step equations, but this time we're just going to focus on multiplication and division. So our learning goal is the same as last time. We're going to focus on understanding how to solve linear equations. All right, let's begin. So as we talked about in the last lesson, when we want to solve one-step equation, we use inverse operations. Right? Addition undoes subtraction, subtraction undoes addition, and in this case we're going to focus on multiplication and division. So we say that multiplication undoes division. So if we look at this little example here, we have division. Right, X is being divided by 2. So you want to ask yourself, what is it being divided by? It's being divided by 2. So we multiply both sides by 2 to undo that division. Now what's really happening here is you're thinking about this as 2 over 1. So we have 2 times x divided by 1 times 2, which is 2. And over here we have 3 times 2, which is 6. And then you're going to simplify this, right? 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we really have 1x equals 6, or just x equals 6. Those are the operations that are really going on here. Now usually you're just going to write, let's see if we had x over 2 equals 3. We're just going to multiply both sides by 2, just like we did. And then we just think, well, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so that leaves x. 3 times 2 is 6. We're done. Okay? Um, now, the last thing we should do is check our answer. So we want to plug it back into the original equation. So if we had x over 2 equals 3, and I said that x equals 6, plug that back in. 6 divided by 2 equals 3. Oh, yep, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 equals 3. We have a check. We're good to go. All right, so let's do um, the other type of undoing. We say that division undoes multiplication. They are inverse operations again, remember? So when we write 3x, remember that that really means 3 times x. So the operation that's being done to x is multiplication, and it's getting multiplied by 3. So to undo multiplication, we divide. We divide both sides by the same number, right? Just like adding and subtracting, we've got to keep the balance. We've got to preserve the equality make sure that things stay equal. So we do the same thing to both sides. Then we have 3 divided by 3, which some people say it cancels. I don't like that. What really happens is it divides out to 1. So we're left with 1x. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So x equals 3. We want to go back and check our work. So we plug it back in. My original expression, or excuse me, my original equation was 3x equals 9. So that's going to be plugging in x equals 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 equals 9. So we know that x equals 3 is a correct solution. All right, let's do a couple more examples. All right, in this example, we're going to throw in some positives and negatives in, in, the, in the next few examples here. So. If we want to solve the equation negative 4x equals 1, first look at the equation and think, well, what's the operation? Well, the operation is multiplication. Negative 4x means negative 4 times x. So to undo the multiplication, I divide. And we'll divide both sides by negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is positive 1. So that leaves me with positive 1x, or just x. And over here, hmm, we have a fraction, negative 1 fourth. Well, big deal. It's just a little fraction. It's not a scary fraction. It's just 1 fourth. We do want to check our answer. So again, start with the original equation. If we had negative 4x equals 1. Let's plug in our value for x. We said x was negative 1 fourth. And we want to check to make sure that that equals 1. All right, so I'm going to think about my negative 4 over here is negative 4 over 1. We know a negative times a negative is positive. 4 times 1 is 4. 
1 times 4 is 4. Mm, this is looking good. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 equals 1. Check. Okay. Especially when we're working with one-step equations, the checking is really, really easy. It should be simple, straightforward. You should be able to do it in just a couple of steps. All right, let's do another example. Let's solve this equation. We have x over 5 equals negative 2. Now, really, when I say x over 5, I mean x divided by 5. So to undo the division, I will multiply. And since I was dividing by 5, I will multiply both sides by 5. So think about that as 5 over 1. So now we have 5 over 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1, x, or just x. And then on the right, we have negative 2 times 5, which is negative 10. So again, here's my solution. Now I'm going to check it. We had x over 5 equals negative 2. I'm going to plug in my solution, which was x equals negative 10. So does negative 10 over 5 equal negative 2? Yep, negative 10 divided by 5. A negative divided by a positive is negative. So negative 2 equals negative 2. Good to go. All right, now there are some exceptions to undoing multiplication. So if we look at this example, right, we said we're going to undo this multiplication with division. We were multiplying by negative 4, so we divided both sides by negative 4, right? Well, sometimes when we multiply, we don't want to undo by using division. And that's when we're multiplying by a fraction. So I want to focus specifically on undoing fractions um, in our problems because you know I said it before we can't escape the fractions we might as well just learn how to deal with them and get rid of them okay so here's the idea when we're multiplying by a fraction we want to undo that multiplication by multiplying by its reciprocal so remember what a reciprocal is it just flips a fraction so for example if we had the, the very boring fraction, a over b, its reciprocal would be b over a. Oh, this is a good question for uh, the left. What is a reciprocal? You guys should be able to answer that question. And then how do you undo multiplying by a fraction? That should go over here on the left as well. Anyway, so get back, getting back to what I was talking about. A over B is a fraction, then flip that. B over A is its reciprocal. Now what happens when I multiply these two things together? A times B, I can't really multiply them, I just write AB. On the bottom, B times A is BA, but the order doesn't matter, so we have AB over AB, and anything divided by itself is 1. Now that's a more abstract example. Let's look at something specific. If we had 3 over 2, its reciprocal would be 2 over 3. If I multiplied that together, 3 times 2 is 6, so that's my numerator. And on the bottom, 2 times 3 is 6, so that's my denominator. And of course, 6 divided by 6 is 1. So when we multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, we always get 1. And that's why um, multiplying by reciprocal is going to undo multiplying by a fraction. So let's look at this specific example here. If I have 1 half x equals 4, I can see that I'm multiplying by a fraction. So to undo this, I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 half is 2 over 1. Well, 2 over 1 is just 2, so you can write it as 2. And then let's multiply. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. So we have 2 over 2x equals 4 times 2 is 8. And then, of course, simplify this. 2 divided by 2 is 1. We wanted it to be that. That's why we multiplied by 2. So we get x equals 8. If we plug it back in to check, we had 1 half times x equals 4. If x is 8, think about that as 8 over 1. So that gives me 8 over 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 equals 4. We're good to go. Let's do one more example with a slightly more difficult fraction. Let's solve this equation. Negative 10 is equal to negative 2 thirds m. Again, this means negative 2 thirds times m. So I'm multiplying by a fraction here. 
and I'm actually going to rewrite this to give myself a little bit more space when I show multiplying by the reciprocal. So here's my original equation. Since my um, fraction here is negative, I'm going to multiply both sides by that exact fract, the reciprocal of that exact fraction. Um, so I'm going to multiply by negative 3 halves. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Negative 3 halves. Now watch what happens when I do this. On the right, we have a negative times a negative, which is positive. 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. And then we had our variable m. So we have 6 over 6m. On the left, think about this as 10 over 1. And there's again, there's a few different ways to simplify this product. We can say negative 3 times 10 is negative 30. 2 times 1 is 2. And now let's simplify this. Negative 30 divided by 2 is negative 15. 6 divided by 6 is 1. So we have negative 15 equals 1m, or just m. That's our solution. m is equal to negative 15. All right, so now let's check our work. We have 10 equals negative 2 thirds m. We're going to plug in negative 15 for my m value. So think about that as negative 15 over 1. Again, you can do negative 2 times negative 15. A negative times a negative is a positive. So 2 times 15 is 30. 3 times 1 is 3. And then 30 divided by 3 is 10. So when we plug it back in, we get our check. 10 equals 10. All right, so that's it. Think about what goes in your summary. Three big ideas here, girls. Multiplication undoes what? Division undoes what? And what undoes, okay, I'm sorry, I can't write that. Er, try again. What undoes multiplying by a fraction? All three of these things should be in your summary. Get those examples on the left. You know what to do. See you in the class.